What is going on guys? Bengalina here coming back at you with another video, another NFL draft video of sorts. And today we're going to be going over my top 50 NFL draft big board. This is a rankings uh, of the top 50 prospects in my opinion. So should be very interesting. You guys can see exactly where I rank players over one another. Uh, and I think there are going to be a lot of surprises along this list. Maybe some not so surprises. I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to go rapid fire hopefully down um, my list of 50 and uh, let me know what you guys think give me your top 10 I mean a top 50 in the comment section is going to be a little bit weird but you know maybe give me your top 10 who are your top 10 players in this draft we're gonna start off with mine number one I have Saquon Barkley I think he's a generational type player um, tremendous tremendous running back all you have to worry about with him is running between the tackles a little bit more effectively but he's fantastic. The outside can beat you with speed. He can beat you with power. Just maybe use that power a little bit more effectively. But Saquon Barkley, the best player in the draft, in my opinion. Number two is Quentin Nelson, offensive guard out of uh, Notre Dame. Saquon Barkley, running back out of Penn State, by the way. Quentin Nelson, really, really solid player. Could be a franchise guard for any team in the NFL. He's like Zach Martin 2.0. So, so good. Another Notre Dame guard that could be incredible. Number three, Roquan Smith. Love Roquan Smith. Could be a weak side, outside linebacker for you. Uh, I could even play him on the inside, depending on whose team I am, you know, hypothetically. Really, really love Roquan Smith. Box-to-box -box range, sideline to sideline, tremendous speed. Coverage ability of, of Roquan Smith is unparalleled in this draft class. He is so, so good in those regards. Pursuit of the ball carrier is insane. Just got to work on shedding blocks a little bit better. Number four, Baker Mayfield. Best quarterback in this class, I think, hands down. Josh Rosen. Uh, is next up on the board a little bit closer but Baker Mayfield to me has the poise in the pocket has the accuracy has the arm talent his mobility is even another trait reminds me a lot of Drew Brees Drew Brees with mobility that's what I see out of Baker Mayfield number five I have Bradley Chubb traditional prototype 4-3 edge rusher 4-3 defensive end very solid player stout and run defense can get after the quarterback good burst off the line very good player number six I have Darius Geis the running back position overall is undervalued, which is why I don't think he's going to go even near the top 10. But Darius Geis is arguably the best running back in this class. And that's saying something considering how much of a generational player I believe Saquon Barkley to be. Darius Geis has the power. He has the agility. Speed is not exactly breakaway speed, but when you have the power and the stamina on the runs that Darius Geis has, I mean, it's incredible to watch. Really, really fun player. He's making the top 10 for me. Number seven is going to be Denzel Ward, cornerback out of Ohio State. Fantastic closing speed. Uh, a trait that Marshawn Lattimore, another Ohio State cornerback, possessed. Really, really solid player. Locked down in coverage. And his athletic profile is tremendous. I feel like I keep forgetting to say the position and the team uh, or college that each of these players are coming from. Roquan, inside linebacker out of Georgia, or linebacker out of Georgia. Mayfield, quarterback, Oklahoma, Chubb. Defensive end, NC State. Darius Geis, running back, LSU. Dan Wood, cornerback, Ohio State. Next up, I have Derwin James, safety, out of Florida State. Another tremendous athlete. He is really, really good in run defense, and he has a coverage ability as well. A lot of that is because of his athletic profile. Can continue to improve at the next level. Um, he has every trait that you'd look for. Derwin James, incredible player. I like him in the top 10. Number nine, I have Deron Payne defensive lineman out of Alabama. This is probably the, as high as you're going to see Deron Payne on anybody's board, but I love Deron Payne. He is extremely athletic for a big man. Could be a nose tackle. Could be a pure defensive tackle. He fits into any scheme. His athletic, uh, athletic profile is just insane. Very disruptive on the defensive interior or stout and run defense and rushing the passer. Really love Deron Payne. And then rounding out the top 10, I have Maurice Hurst. Maybe a bit of a surprise, Maurice Hurst is extremely disruptive. Reminds me a lot of the production that we saw with Aaron Donald out of Pitt. But uh, Maurice Hurst, defensive tackle out of Michigan, extremely fun to watch. A lot of uh, his draft stock got crushed because of his size. I don't buy that. Look at Aaron Donald and his uh, heart issues, which he's cleared now. But either way, with these rankings, I don't really care about off the field issues. I don't care about any of that. All I care about is how good of a player are you. And to me, Maurice Hurst is incredible. I have him at number 10. At number 11, I have Harold Landry, edge rusher out of Boston College. Very, very disruptive edge bender. He is incredibly fun to watch. I, I like defense. That's really what it comes down to. I'm a huge defensive guy. Harold Landry uh, is a toy that a lot of defensive coordinators would love to play with. 
Uh, that sounded pretty gross, but you guys, you guys know what I'm saying. Very, very fun player to watch. Number 12, I have Jair Alexander, cornerback out of Louisville. Extreme athlete with tremendous ball skills and coverage ability. That's what I look for in a cornerback. Jair Alexander can play on the inside, in the slot, can play on the outside. He has decent enough size, about 5'11 and 6 foot, has a pretty big frame. Love Jair Alexander, love what he can do, love what he can provide to an NFL team. Should go, I think, in the first round, might end up going in the second. Number 13, I have Minka Fitzpatrick. Another defensive back here. I think versatility adds a lot to his value. Can play cornerback, can be a boundary corner, can play in the nickel, can play safety. I mean, and he, he's solid. He's seen action at all of those uh, positions at Alabama, which is, you know, one of the best defenses every year in college football. Mickey Fitzpatrick, very talented. 14, I have Josh Jackson. And to me, he's kind of a weird one, but I do like what Josh Jackson brings to the table. He is a big cornerback with lockdown abilities and the best ball skills of any corner in this draft. Uh, again, those are things that I value quite highly. You'll see a trend with this big board uh, with the positions that I value really highly, which is cornerback, which is safety, um, which is, you know, edge rusher. I value a lot of those positions very highly. So you're going to see a lot more defensive players and offensive players, I would guess. I haven't done the math on it, but I would guess. Number 15, I have Calvin Ridley offensive player here receiver out of Alabama he's a good player a little bit older than you'd like he is 23 uh gonna be 24 at the start of next season I believe sometime during the season he's gonna turn 24 but he's the best day one receiver in the in the class I think he just is no off the field issues very good player number 16 Tremaine Edmonds extreme athletic beast gonna be 19 on draft day gonna be a teenager he's 6'5 250 Sideline to sideline range, decent coverage, great pursuit of the ball carrier, insane athlete. He is a freak and a very fun player to watch. Number 16, number number 17, I've, I've misnumbered this, hold on. Well, you guys won't see it, I'll, I'll fix it in a minute. Will Hernandez is going to be number 17, really, really fun player to watch, a mauler, a guard. I like the not so fun positions to watch, I think that's fun to me. <laughs> I love a good offensive line mauler. Uh, to me, uh, Will Hernandez is... Richie Incognito, the bully, 2.0, big mauling, run blocking, offensive line. And next up, I have DJ Moore at number 18. He is my wide receiver, number two, talented player. Love watching DJ Moore. He moves the chains. Has good athleticism, great athletic profile, fantastic hands out of Maryland. Really fun receiver to watch. Everyone's fun for me to watch. I keep saying the same thing. Next up, though, at number 19, I have Justin Reed, a safety out of Stanford. Tremendous ball skills tremendous range awesome in breaking down to shut down the run and run support as a safety he is extremely extremely talented younger brother of former pro bowl safety eric reed out of lsu and san francisco 49ers i think he signed with the Bengals, if i'm not mistaken but justin reed extreme football intelligence as well running at the top 20 i have vita vea nose tackle out of washington he shuts it down he does not let anyone buy him he eats up blocks he is a sud nose tackle. He's exactly what you look for at the position. Looks like a Damon Harrison 2.0. Looks like a you know a prime Paul Solei, something like that. Just a pure block eating nose tackle. Haloti Nada. Some of these names come to mind. Next up, I'm just gonna say next up. I don't really know where the numbers are, but I have Josh Rosen. Uh, for me, the quarterback position is so highly valued that even though I don't think Josh Rosen is particularly anything special, and now that's just my speculative opinion. All right, I know a lot of people are going to love Josh Rosen. A lot of people, maybe not. I think Josh Rosen is pretty good, certainly above average. I think he's a talented player. He comes at number 20 on my board just because of how important quarterbacks are. And uh, that's what position he plays, obviously, at a UCLA. Followed by Taven Bryan, defensive tackle out of Florida. Uh, looks like he could be the next J.J. Watt in some regards. And I know that seems like a stretch. I don't mean exactly as good as J.J. Watt. I'm not predicting Taven Bryan to come out here and compete for an MVP win multiple defensive player of the years, but I'm just saying he possesses some similar traits in stopping the run and getting after the quarterback with great burst, great strength. I don't think he's J.J. Watt 2.0, but I bet he possesses similar traits on the defensive line. Next up, I have Rashawn Evans, inside linebacker out of Alabama. Good range, great at shutting down the run. Needs to improve in uh, coverage, but maybe if you play him in the right system, you don't even have to worry about that most of the time. Put him in a nice 3-4 have him drop back occasionally, but mainly just be that, that thumper up the middle. 
Next up, Marcus Davenport, edge rusher out of UTSA. The reason that Marcus Davenport is, is this high up on the list is just because I like what he brings to the table, has a fantastic frame, production was good. You just wonder a little bit how much of that is because you played at UTSA. You got to wonder. But he is a good player, great potential, great athlete. Next up, Cortland Sutton, receiver out of SMU. I like the size. I like the frame. I like the hands. Route running could use some work, but that frame, that athleticism, you're going to hear me talk about that a lot. I think the potential is a big thing that I look for for a lot of these players. And when you have just the athletic profile and the production like Cortland Sutton has, you're going to boost your value, in my opinion, quite a bit as we followed up with Arden Key. Kind of a similar thing here. Arden Key was one of my top edge rushers in the nation two years ago he's had some issues i think suspended from the team you don't like to see that hate to see it and uh, his production went down when he was on the field which you also hate to see but i can't help think about the player i saw two years ago at lsu and arden key that arden key that edge rusher that athletic freak was dominant that's the player that i think arden key could eventually become in the nfl I think a team would be wise to take a chance on him at some point, although you do really got to wonder about these guys with off-the-field issues um, coming into the draft. We look at what happened with Reuben Foster, which is a travesty indeed, as we follow it up with another LSU player in Dante Jackson, cornerback out of LSU. That's redundant. I just said that. But doesn't exactly have the size, but has the speed, has the coverage ability. Dante Jackson, very good player, very fun to watch. And next up, we're going to see Isaiah Wynn, guard out of Georgia. Very solid guard, is stout in run blocking and pass blocking. That's what you're looking for out of a guard. I don't think he's as good as Quentin Nelson, but I think he's certainly a talented player. Probably worthy of a first-round pick as we're going to move into DJ Chark. One of my favorite receivers in this class. I love DJ Chark on tape. Uh, I know that some people have had issues with him in terms of how fast he actually plays rather than how fast he ran at the combine. I'm not worried about this. I think he plays fine on tape. He plays to his size. He does. He can go up for the ball. He's got to work on, uh, on I would say, hand strength and really holding on to the football uh, when you're going up for those 50-50 balls. I don't think that's really his game. I think put him as a big body in the slot, improve his route running, improve his route tree, and DJ Chark is going to be an incredible player as we're going to finish out here uh, with Billy Price. Another very intriguing player can play both guard and center both at a very high level out of Ohio State. Really like Billy Price. I think he's a solid offensive lineman. You worry a little bit about injuries. He's coming off injury. But when healthy, he is a beast. Now we have Mike McGlinchey. This is a weird player for me. And it kind of gets a little bit weird near the bottom here because it's, are they the top player near their position? Does that increase their value? And to me, when I'm making my big board, those things come into play. Because if you're weak at a position, and maybe maybe we're saying that you know a guy behind him, as you guys can see, Malik Jefferson, maybe we're saying Malik Jefferson is better than Mike McGlinchey in overall value, but when Malik Jefferson is the fifth or sixth best linebacker in the class, when Mike McGlinchey could be the best tackle, is it going to boost his value a little bit? And in my opinion, yes, if you're drafting, that's what a big board is for. So I think Mike McGlinchey has more value, which is why he's higher than a Malik Jefferson. Why, am I calling him Mick Jefferson? Why am I combining their names? Mike McGlinchey, Malik Jefferson is going to follow that up. Uh, great range on him. Great athleticism. He's got to play a little bit less like a chicken with his head cut off, though. Be a little bit smarter. Develop those coverage skills. Could be a very good player. Let's finish it up with another Texas player. Not finish. We're just getting started here. Another Texas player. Hook'em horns in Connor Williams. Could be the best tackle in this class. The thing about this tackle class, it is so weird. With all these players that are so close, you look at Colton Miller, who you can see a little bit further down the list. You look at Mike McGlinchey, you look at Connor Williams, you look at Orlando Brown. Where do all these players rank? Who is the best tackle? I don't really know. But in my opinion, it is going to be a Mike McGlinchey. Uh, and then Connor Williams a little bit further down the board as we move on to Lamar Jackson, quarterback out of Louisville. Very intriguing player. Obviously, we know how good Lamar Jackson is on the run. His running ability is second to none in the class. And you've heard me compare him to Michael Vick in some instances. I, I, I keep hearing myself, and I'm making these ridiculous-seeming comparisons. Baker Mayfield to Drew Brees. Taven Bryan to J.J. Watt. 
I'm not necessarily saying that they're the next best player following up. They're the next J.J. Watt. I'm not going to say, you know, that's the next Tom Brady for any quarterback. But they possess similar traits. And to me, Lamar Jackson plays a lot like Michael Vick and has a lot of similar traits. The running ability, obviously. The arm talent, obviously. They both have cannons. It's just working about consistency and accuracy. The same problem that Mike Vick had. But Mike Vick, when he was playing, and he worked it after going to jail. Jail is the best thing to happen to Michael Vick from a quarterback position standpoint. I know there were some other things that were not so great about that. Mainly what put him there. Um, but you look at a consistent and accurate Lamar Jackson, you're looking at one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Especially when you have to contend with him running the ball and you're game planning around that. Disgusting, potentially. Next up, Colton Miller, offensive tackle out of UCLA. Very solid offensive tackle. Great size. He is gigantic. I believe he's 6'8", if I'm not mistaken. I think he's 6'8". I don't know. Tell me in the comments section below because I'm going to forget that I even said this uh, while going through and editing this video uh, with all that I have to do. Good player, though. Great pass blocker. Could improve a little bit in run defense. Or not run defense. In run offense, if you will, in my opinion. As we're going to go to James Daniels, who certainly does not need that. Pretty good pass blocker. Excellent run blocker. He's a mauler at center. Very, very fun player to watch. Again, I know he's a center. How can center be fun to watch? He manhandles some defensive linemen, some linebackers. When he pulls a lot of the time, it is a thing of beauty. James Daniels, certainly a fun player. As we move on to Ronnie Harrison, safety out of Alabama, like Ronnie Harrison. I think he's a pure, strong safety. That could also play a bit of free safety. He reminds me a little bit of Hashan Clinton Dix. Or Haha, -ha, if you want to call him by his nickname name. I don't know what's going on there. But Ronnie Harrison's good. He's a pretty solid athlete with good coverage and good run defense. Very solid player. That's all I can say about him. So we move on to Sam Hubbard. Sam Hubbard for me is a weird one as well. Because right here, I mean, I'm ranking what he has, he has a potential to turn into. Which is a very, very solid player. And a player that was a little bit inconsistent at Ohio State. But he's good in run defense. And he can get after the quarterback. We see a more consistent Sam Hubbard at the next level. He is certainly worth a first round pick, even though I don't think he's going to go in the first round as we move on to, uh, well, I think he could, but I think he is going to be at the tail end if, if he does. Deshaun Hand, defensive lineman out of Alabama. Really exciting player as well because all these players down here are intriguing, and you're going to see the next name. That is certainly an intriguing name if you know who that is. But Deshaun Hand, really good athlete. All these defensive linemen out of Alabama are really, really good athletes that can stop the run, that can get after the quarterback. Deshaun Hand has somehow insane sideline to sideline speed. Really, really fun player. As we're going to move on to Antonio Callaway. One of the most intriguing names in this entire draft class. Why? Because Antonio Callaway can't stay out of trouble. I had to include him, include him on my list. I think he's an incredible football player. But I said with my, my 50, with my big board, that I wouldn't really consider off the field incidents and and things like that. I kind of do. I kind of do. And when you have so many incidents with Antonio Callaway, he had to slide down a bit. I think he's the second best receiver in this class. He has done very well against some of the top defensive backs in this class. And when he's on, he is on. Stay out of trouble. He recognized the fact that he was an idiot for a lot of time at Florida. If he can stay out of trouble, stay on the field, he can be insane i'm telling you keep the name antonio callaway in mind he is a very very good player certainly a name you guys don't want to forget because either way something's going to happen with him he's not going to be a name here that just fizzles out in my opinion he's either going to be a beast on the field or he's going to get into some really big off the field shit and totally ruin his career going to be fun to watch either way as we're going to pretty much round out the list here i think i might have 51 i might have 51 we're gonna start with landed uh leighton vander esch though linebacker out of boise state uh i don't want to compare him to brian erlacher because i've been making a lot of ridiculous comparisons over the course of this thing but I've, I've rationalized them they're not you know dead set comparisons but they have similar traits when i see leighton vander esch on the field he looks like a brian erlacher maybe that's because of the conference a little bit that they both played in Maybe that's because of the way that they both play, though. They both have very similar athletic profiles. 
They both have good game speed, sideline to sideline speed at times. Very, very good in run defense, though. Very solid tacklers. That's why I really like Leighton Van Der Esch. We're going to move on to Dorrance Armstrong Jr. Really intriguing player for me. Loved him a lot. Watching him at Kansas quite a bit, being in the Big 12. Uh, he was a solid, solid player. And his pass rush productivity was insane two years ago at Kansas. And he was playing injured. And then, this past year, he's healthy. His run defense gets way, way, way better than it was two years ago. But his pass rush productivity goes way down when he's playing healthy. Very odd. But a player with a ton of potential nonetheless as we go to Ronald Jones. Halfback out of USC. Rojo is a very good player. Good agility. Surprising power and good speed. Love Rojo. This is a very talented running back class. He is certainly a big reason why. We're going to go to Isaiah Oliver. Big bodied cornerback. I think he fits the mold of exactly what a team like the Seattle Seahawks would like to do. We see them go after players like this all the time. With a Brandon Browner. With a Deshaun Shedd. With a Byron Maxwell. Isaiah Oliver has very similar uh, frame to a lot of these players. He has a very similar frame. Uh, he has good speed, great physicality, very fun cornerback to watch. I keep saying the same thing, but you guys get what I'm saying. I, I enjoy football. Football is a lot of fun for me. 44, I have Dallas Godert. He is a tight end, and he is a good one. The tape is not all there on Dallas. I mean, he, he played in a very, very weird uh, conference because... You know, it's, it's weird to really analyze that. He went to South Dakota State, and you're saying, hey, South Dakota State. Who is he playing against? And the answer is really nobody. That's that's the reality. He's really not playing against anyone uh, of any real notable talent. But he has what you look for on tape. He has his size. He has his speed. He has the hands, the route running, the run blocking. Could be the best tight end in this class. I think he is. 45, Christian Kirk. He's a player that just barely made the list, obviously. With all these players down here, they're just barely making the list. I have a lot of people I know that love Christian Kirk. I'm not a huge fan of him. I still think it'd be a bit disrespectful to uh, not include him on my top 50 big board. He's a good player, good route running. I think he needs to learn to catch with his hands. He catches too much with his body, and I'm not sure if that's something you can really teach yourself to do at the next level and really define your hands. Because we look at players that catch with their body. You look at a Will Fuller. And, you know, they have some effectivity, some effectiveness, I should say. I don't know. I'm making up words. Um, but they still catch with their body a lot, and it leads them to drop passes with their hands and have, you know, passes bounce off their chest pad, uh, chest pads a little bit, their shoulder pads on their chest. You know, you guys know what I'm saying. I, I'm sounding ridiculous right now. But you got to catch with your hands the receiver. Christian Kirk doesn't do that enough for me. I don't think he has defined hands to go without route running and explosiveness. That's why he's a little bit further down this list. Jesse Bates, safety out of Wake Forest, is up next. Extremely instinctive safety with good coverage and good run-stuffing ability as a safety. You like that. Next up, Obo Okoronkwo. That's Obanaya Okoronkwo out of Oklahoma. He's another weird player for me. He's a bit of a tweener, in my opinion, where he's not exactly a huge defensive end or edge rusher, but he doesn't have the athleticism to really do anything else but edge rush. He is a good athlete, but I'm, you know what I'm saying. You guys know what a tweener is, I hope. Um, I don't. I, I want him to be successful. I think he's really good. I think he's really talented. He's just got to play in the right system, and that's why I think he's a little bit undervalued as we go on to the final two here. Mike Gesicki, Zach Ertz 2.0, has everything that Zach Ertz has, uh, except maybe even a better athlete for sure with, you know, can jump higher, can run faster. Has good hands, good route running ability. Just can't run block at all. And last, but certainly not least, is Sean Elliott. Safety out of the University of Texas. I've loved to watch Sean Elliott play. Had to include him in my top 50 big board. Deshaun Elliott has surprisingly good speed. He has tremendous ball skills and run defense. His coverage ability is very, very solid as well. Love watching Deshaun Elliott play. Had to include him in the top 50. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Hopefully this video was uh, more put together than I feel like it was recording it. But regardless, I'm excited for the draft. I will be streaming the draft live on YouTube. Subscribe if you're new. That will be on the 26th of April. Should be a fun one. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.